All right, hi everyone, I'm back from my break, but today we're just going to be talking about some more things that have been happening in the community. First of all, Microsoft has joined the Blender Development Fund, but don't worry, that doesn't mean that they get to pull any strings. Of course, whenever new companies join the fund, there's always a way for people to get concerned or even angry, predicting the end of Blender as we know it. But that's not going to happen. Ton has always tried to make it very clear that when new companies sign up for the fund, it doesn't mean they get to change the direction of Blender's development or shift priorities around. Blender is, and always will be, a free and open source project which means that anyone can fork off of Blender and form their own communities around new versions of it. And we see stuff like this with B4 Artists, which is a version of Blender aimed to be more friendly towards artists, but it's entirely subjective. But I think this is one of the beautiful things about this kind of open source project is that if you want to make changes, you can. But the one major requirement is that Blender is and always should be free. Now money coming in from new companies is a great thing because it allows more developers to be hired to work on Blender. So as a result of that, we get more features in a shorter amount of time. So there's not really anything to complain about. But speaking of which, if you are maybe interested in working for Blender, then you should keep an eye on the jobs page. You never know, it could be the start of a new life path for you. Anyway, moving on, Cascadeur, or Cascader, Cascadeur, the physics-based and deep learning powered animation tool is now freely available to download as part of their open beta. It looks like a really cool piece of software. You can create various poses of an animation along a timeline and then edit the trajectory of the bones over time with a kind of onion skinning interface that they call physical or ballistic ghosts. The laws of physics are used to interpret how the characters should be posed along that timeline. So it's a really fluid way of creating animations. And because it's physics based, you can clearly see the forces acting on the character and even pose around the center of mass. One thing that actually surprised me in their introductory video was showing that if you pin the center of mass in space, it will give you a zero gravity effect when animating. They also have a YouTube channel with a series of breakdown videos showing you how to use the software, so if you're interested in that, be sure to take a look. Now, Simon Thomas has been working on a procedural shading course for the Blender Cloud. I'm sure many of you already know who he is, but if you don't know, he's a bit of a node god in the community. Some of the things he's done with procedural shading are unbelievable and there were lots of impressive results I shared in my earlier Node-Vember video. So if you want to learn how to get good with Nodes, then it might be worth signing up to the Blender Cloud to take part in that content. Now there's lots of other good stuff available on the Blender Cloud, but we won't go into that in this video. But I should also say, if you're interested in learning more about how to use Nodes, and if you don't want to spend any money on the Blender Cloud, then you should definitely check out the YouTube channels of Erindale and just 3 d Things. I spent quite a bit of time talking to the people behind these channels, and they're absolutely lovely, and they're just really keen on sharing their knowledge. Anyway, the last thing we're going to talk about in this video is the new Blender community badges. Essentially, Blender is telling community creators to use this badge instead of the regular logo. Personally, I think it looks really cool. I'm glad they did a few different versions because that was always one of the main issues with putting the original logo on thumbnails. It's such a weird shape and the color looks a bit out of place depending on what kind of artwork you're putting on the thumbnails. But as I say, these new ones look pretty cool, so I think I'll probably start using them. Anyway, yeah, that's all for today. Links to all of these things can be found in the description. I hope you're doing well and rest assured, new tutorial content is coming soon. I've been preparing some things while I was away, so look forward to seeing that. So thanks for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.